Wind River Mountains, Wyoming, 1972. Naturalist John Mizinski is spending the summer working for the U.S. Forest Service. I was employed by the U.S. Forest Service in the Wyoming Game and Fish Department on a cooperative study. The project was set up so that I would live in the wild. Late one night, John feels what he thinks is a large bear pressing against the outside of his tent. I was approached by something that cast a shadow. The moon was just coming up, it was almost a full moon. I clearly saw a hand with four fingers and an opposed thumb, like a human hand. And it was large, it was twice the size of my hand. It was getting aggressive with its movements on the side of the tent. I hit it with the back of my hand. Whatever it was, it backed off, ran back behind some trees. So I was totally perplexed. I have to say that the thought of Sasquatch never occurred to me at that moment. When John reported the encounter to the Forest Service, he learned that there had been a rash of similar reports. His boss, afraid the sightings might be the work of a prankster, asked him to investigate and interview the witnesses. I eventually interviewed about 25 people. The most interesting one was a young man in a little cabin up against the mountain. He had reported seeing one of these behaving aggressively in front of his cabin. And he shot it. And he thought he'd killed it, but it got up immediately and ran off. John visited the cabin and, incredibly, found that there were hair samples left near the house. He collected the hairs and brought them to Walter Birkby, a well-known forensic anthropologist and leading expert on hair analysis. The analysis came back a few days later, and Walter Birkby said, and this is a quote, this is my first stumper. These hairs are primate, and he was certain about that. The result was controversial because the hairy primate is not of an animal native to Wyoming. That kind of suggested the idea of Bigfoot. Solid physical evidence of a primate in Wyoming? You might think that the scientific community would be thrilled by such a discovery. But John quickly realized the perils of making that assumption. The head of the research division actually shoot us out, pointing his finger at us and saying, if your names are ever associated with this word Bigfoot again, I will personally see to it that you're fired. If hard evidence of Bigfoot really exists, then why are scientists so eager to dismiss it? Maybe it's safer to think that it's all just a delusion or a hoax. Or perhaps Bigfoot doesn't fit into their preconceived notions of the world. In any case, some evidence is difficult, if not downright impossible, to ignore.